What if I told you some stories you need to hear to believe? Everywhere you went, Dan and Dave, Dan and Dave. And that's these two athletes that are going to go to the Olympics this year, and it's going to be settled in Barcelona. When Reebok approached Dave and I, the first thing both of us said, you know neither one of us are on this team yet. The thought never, ever crossed my mind that Dan nor Dave would not make that Olympic team. The all-new 30 for 30 podcast. Subscribe now on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. 30 for 30 podcast is presented by Mini. We're finding the best sports stories for you right now. And to do that, we're behind the wheel of the new Mini Countryman, the biggest Mini yet. Please proceed to the highlighted round. To find great sports stories, you have to get out into the world and follow your instincts. That's where the new Mini Countryman's all-wheel drive comes in handy. With all four, we can chase down a story in the city, the country, and most places in between. No matter what story you're chasing, the new Mini Countryman will help you find it. It's available now, and so are 30 for 30 podcasts. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Ah, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio. That's 98.7 FM New York City. That's 710 ESPN LA, and of course, nationwide over the airwaves of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Style, Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. I am so hyped. I am so excited. I am coming at you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm here to tell you right now, site, this is the site for the mega fight. Not an exhibition, a fight. Triple G, Gennady Golovkin versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. 37-0 and with 33 KOs versus 31. Wins, one loss. I mean, I, I just don't even know what to say. When you look at it, this is what I'm saying, 30, 34 knockouts, by the way. But this is the bottom line. When you look at Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G, it's a mega fight. It's not an exhibition. It's a lot to be excited about. And we're going to get into it big time because within the next few minutes, I'll have promoter extraordinaire Oscar De La Hoya. He was in studio with me in Bristol last week talking about the fight. Damn it, he'll be on again because he's Oscar De La Hoya. He's the man that delivered on the promise that this fight would take place. He's the man that delivered the goods. He told us all. He told us all we would definitely have it, and that's exactly what we have. I love it. I'm so happy that he pulled it off, and I'm proud of him. It's just that simple for me. Having said all of that, I'll get into the fight a little in a few minutes when Oscar's right in front of me. Until that time, until that time, I got to transition to something. This is about Odell Beckham Jr. It's necessary to bring this up. Got a couple of stories I'm going to bring up. We saw the sign. It, the Boston Red Sox game, we've got to touch on a little bit later on in the show. We heard Kenny Stills of the Miami Dolphins talking about how Colin Kaepernick deserves more support. We'll be getting into all of that. But for the moment, for the time being, let me bring up this stuff about Odell Beckham Jr. Now, for those of you who did not know, Odell Beckham Jr., who did not play in the game one in the opener, for the Dallas, against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night, a game in which the, da- the New York Giants lost because they could only put up three points the entire damn game. What you may not have known, what you may not have seen, was that while Odell Beckham Jr. could not play, he certainly didn't have a problem dancing. He was dancing in the club, y'all. He was having a dance-off with Russell Westbrook or somebody. Listen, he can do what he wants. He's not playing. We understand it. We respect it. We, we get where he's coming from. I, listen, I'm not sweating that. I truly, truly, truly am not. But I have to tell y'all something. I have to speak from the heart here. Optics matter. Particularly when you're a young man and you're looking for a mega contract. And that's the big story here. It's not really about Odell Beckham Jr. It's about getting inside the heads of some of these knuckleheads who don't see business, who don't see the forest from the trees. I don't give a damn if you're in L.A., New York, or anywhere in between. You got to see this stuff and you got to know it for what it is. You Odell Beckham Jr., you missing games. You're Odell Beckham Jr., you can't play, but you can dance. You Odell Beckham Jr., and it's an off day, but it's the week of a playoff game against Green Bay, and you chilling in South Beach when your team is in New York. You can't, folks want to see you, or they want to know you in that film room. 
They want to know that if you can't, they ain't, they ain't seeing you and they don't know where you are. They want to know it's because you're someplace studying and getting yourself ready for the big time matchup that's, that's to come. That's what they want. And when you don't do something like that, it's a shot at your own credibility. You got, I don't care that you're, I don't care that you're not healthy enough to play football, but you're healthy enough to dance. I don't want to hear about you being on a damn dance floor when you're looking for new contract money. You know why? Because leadership matters. Optics matter. And when you find yourself in a situation where you're doing things that most other people wouldn't be able to do and get away with, even if you can get away with it because you can ball, it's still not a good look. It doesn't speak to leadership. And if it doesn't speak to leadership, I'm going to compromise your money. I'm just so sick and tired of playing these games with people. This is, this is real life. You, if you, do you think that dudes are getting paid max dollars just because they can play? You get max dollars because of how you act. It's that simple. Certainly there are people that get paid more than they deserve to get paid. Certainly there are people that get paid based on their skill set. But the real mega stars in this world are mega stars not just because of what they do, but how they lead. Odell Beckham Jr. wants to be the highest paid player in the NFL. This is what he's on the record saying. It'll never happen because he'll never get paid more than a, a star quarterback. Let's be real about that. But he wants to be paid as the highest paid player in the NFL. That ain't going to happen. So the next thing on his list is being paid as the highest paid receiver. Why would Odell Beckham Jr. deserve more money than Julio Jones? Why would Odell Beckham Jr. deserve more money than Antonio Brown? Why would he? Now, he's up there because he's electrifying and he's sensational. And I'm here to tell you, he's not a bad dude. He's actually a good dude. But if you've got this mentality that I'm going to do what I want, when I want, how I want, and who cares how it looks, and you have that attitude now, it is, it, is it not within reason? Is it not plausible? Is it not fair that I come to the conclusion and say, guess what? How can I trust you to do what I need you to do? As a leader, once I give you this money, because we all know wealth or being rich and famous, we all know it breeds nonchalance. It breeds the kind of maverick mentality that ain't always good for an organization. It breeds feelings of being able to operate with impunity. We all know this. And so when you see a dude and he doesn't appear to be disciplined enough and focused enough to pay attention to the optics of a situation, meaning how things look, how can you trust him? Now, none of this is to say that Odell Beckham Jr. doesn't deserve his money. Of course he deserves his money because he's electrifying. And he deserves his money because he produces when he's out on the field. And he didn't commit any crimes. He didn't do anything bad. I'm simply pointing out the importance of representing the franchise in a leadership capacity that's conducive to other dudes, ultimately benefiting not just yourself. You might be able to be that guy that can go out and party and act like you want to be on Dancing with the Stars and still go out there and perform exceptionally well. But what about the person that emulates you? Can they pull it off? Do they have that in them? Do they have that kind of capability? That's the question. And I'm here to tell you, the answer is usually no. People who usually do certain things like that, it's all about themselves. It doesn't benefit the whole. That's just the reality of the situation. And everybody needs to get with that program. 866-729-ESPN. That's always the number to call up. That's 866-729-3776. Coming up, the 10-time world champion who happens to be one of the great, great promoters in the game of boxing today. The man responsible for delivering arguably the fight of this millennial. Triple G versus Canelo Alvarez. His name is Oscar De La Hoya, and he's up next with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh... 
Well, uh, honey. Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico,、uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15 percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Stephen A. Smith's coming at you live from Radio Row in Las Vegas, Nevada, site for Saturday night's mega fight: Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G Gennady Golovkin. Las Vegas, Nevada, T-Mobile Center. Can't wait for it. No question about it. Oscar De La Hoya will be with us in just a couple of minutes. Or so, number to call up as always is eight six six seven two nine ESPN. That's eight six six seven two nine three seven seven six. I meant what I said about Odell Beckham Jr. I meant what I said about it because it applies to any any athlete. You're not getting paid. This notion that you're getting paid just to play. No, ladies and gentlemen, you're also getting paid to lead. Getting paid to lead. When you talk about the mega dollars, you're getting paid to lead. It's just that simple. And if you think otherwise, you got your head in the sand. Oscar De La Hoya. Oh yes, he's on his way. He's coming now. He's coming now. My man is about to walk over here. Ten-time world champion, boxing promoter extraordinaire, the man responsible, responsible for delivering this fight. The man who convinced me to make it. That's right. The one and only Oscar De La Hoya. What's going on, man? The man who convinced me to make this fight. Please, man. You just, Jesus. This is all you. This is all you. So it's almost here. It's almost almost forty-eight hours away. Forty-eight. How you feeling right now? Anxious.、Mm. I feel anxious, man. I just、yeah. want to see it. I, I want to see some bombs. I want to see. I want to see some knockdowns. I want to see. I want to see who the better, the best middleweight is. Well, you know, of we, our time. We've talked about this 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 fight on on several occasions. I want to talk to you about the sport of boxing because、right. you're one of the people that did a great that did a lot for this sport. You、right. fought all comers. You were a champion. You didn't duck anybody.、Um, you gave people fights that they wanted to see. What has been your mentality as you've watched the sport unfold for the last ten, fifteen, twenty years? What、right. was it like for you to be a part of this sport? All right, you ready? Let me explain. You、Go、ready?、Ahead. So, so I was thinking about、um, I was thinking about my career, you know, sure, reminiscing. Sure. Da, da, da.、Yeah. So I was thinking, okay, I fought, I fought, I fought Pacquiao in his prime. I fought Mayweather in his prime. I fought Trinidad in his prime. I fought Sugar Shane Mosley in his prime. I fought Bernard Hopkins in his prime, and the list goes on and on and on. That's what keeps boxing alive, you、mm-hmm. know. Great fights and fighters fighting in their prime, you、mm-hmm. know. And、uh, and then you have then you have Mayweather, who takes after me, right?、Mm-hmm. When I retire, and and you have these types of fights that are that are not that are not a please they're, they're not they're not pleasing to the to the fan,、mm-hmm. and and little by little you keep chipping chipping away at the sport, you know?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're creating these、mm-hmm. big numbers and this and that, but you're chipping away、mm-hmm. at the sport, the dignity,、right. the respect that boxing has, you、mm-hmm. know. And now you you move into、uh, you move into you transition into Canelo Golovkin.、Mm-hmm. Well, this fight can bring boxing back. We're riding a wave,、mm-hmm. a, a wonderful wave, a huge wave,、yep. because people are talking about boxing. I want to get back. I'm going to get back and definitely because I'm here to talk to you about Canelo Triple G. But I want to get back to that point that you talk about how it chipped away at boxing. One of the things that I did when I've confronted Mayweather in the past about this stuff, I said, look. This is the kind of thing. Oscar's not the only one that says this kind of stuff about you. Other people have said this stuff about you as well. You know what Mayweather and many others have pointed to? They say, "Why won't Oscar blame himself? Because we're businessmen now. Because Oscar." Now he talked about how Oscar wasn't just a great fighter. Oscar was a smart businessman. As Oscar knew how to promote the sport and make money for the fighters, not just for the promoters. What do you say to that? When people look at the business and the boxing, and they might lament it, but they say Oscar. You you taught guys you taught guys how to do this. Well, I mean, as I I I didn't teach I didn't teach guys how to duck fighters. I didn't <laughs> I didn't teach guys how to not fight、right. com- competition in their prime. You、mm-hmm. know,、right. I I as a fighter I taught I taught fighters that hey you you must you have to fight fighters in their prime. That's the only way boxing is gonna you know. Stay alive and、mm-hmm. and 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 you know and and keep growing.、Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, now that I'm a promoter, 
I'm running a business, yes. I'm running a business, but guess what? As a promoter, and this is a statistic that's on paper, is yep. that we've promoted most of the fights that fights of the year. Mm. Us as Golden Boy. I right. mean because we don't we don't we don't take risks, you know? Because boxing is already a risk. Mm. We we just make the best fights happen and right. make the best fights happen for the fans, you know. And and you can't make every fight happen because that's the problem. Fighters don't want to fight each other. Fighters want to think about well, uh, I can make a I can I can you know just you know uh, be involved in a nice little boxing event, uh, boxing right. classic matchup, and you know I don't I just want to dance around and hit and not get hit and this and that. Man, let's fight. Right. Let's fight. That's why the UFC is so is so damn popular. That's why that's why all these fans are like, uh, you know, they they love the UFC because they love knockouts, they right. love action. Well, they love the fact that Dana White makes these guys fight, like you're pointing to. Do you think that boxing should have a Dana White figure overseeing it to make sure that guys fight just like you say they should? No, it's it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not having a Dana White. I, okay. I think what's what's. What what the UFC has is that they are in control of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to be part of the UFC, it's an honor. It's a, it's you, you sign a contract and you do what we what we tell you. Right. You know, and obviously in boxing it's the it's the other way around. The fighter is in charge because mm -hmm. without the fighter, there's no sport. Gotcha. Just like with Canelo. I mean, if there's no Canelo, then we we wouldn't be here. That's right. Where we're at today. So it's just it, look, it's two different sports. Uh, they're handled differently. Yep. Um, um, you know, in boxing, the fighter makes the majority of the money. In the UFC, the UFC makes the majority That's of right. the money. It's, it's just totally different. Oscar De La Hoya right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's get back into this fight, Canelo, uh, Triple G. Are you more, less, or the same in terms of confidence for your fighter, Canelo, in this fight comes Saturday night, compared to what you were a month ago yeah. or three months ago when you first announced that this is what was going to go down? Um, probably more confident. Why? Just right now, 10 minutes ago, for instance, yeah. uh, uh, Bernard Hopkins' guy um, um, comes up and tells me uh, Canelo's looking like uh, James Tony. Mm -hmm. you know, staying in front of his opponent and moving his waist and, I mean, it, it just gives you the confidence that Canelo's growing as a fighter. He's learning. He's uh, he's not going to run. He's going to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. But he's going to move his waist right in front of him. You know, I love that. Now, you're, now you're my man, so I got to get on your this Oscar because Talk see, me. me and you saw each other in LA a, a few weeks this is a few weeks ago now this is a few, we've talked a lot since then but a few weeks ago you were in LA <laughs> you were a little bit nervous you were a little well, because you, you know. were like hey he's bigger he Canelo is. he's stronger now but but I'm worried Stephen A that the speed might be a little bit compromised yeah. you don't have that concern anymore no, no concern no concern. really yeah I talked to Canelo the other day he said don't worry about my speed I'm faster now than ever how can, is, that, is he lying? Is that possible? I, I, is, that, I, is that possible? It could be. Come on, Oscar. Listen, could you're the 10-time champion. Don't dance around. <laughs> I, you know this answer better than it me. could be, is man. That, but he could actually be bigger, stronger, and faster. If, if he does the right things, uh, you know, he, do, he does have the, the – the, he hired a new uh, the nutritionist and a, a, a weight trainer. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if he did everything correctly the way he's supposed to um, – because of his discipline, mm -hmm. because of his uh, his uh, you know his, his the love for the game, the respect for boxing, mm -hmm. I think I think he did everything correctly. But, and aren't, but aren't routines important in this particular? Thing? I can't see Oscar winning championships, and then all of a sudden I'm going to go in the ring against this dude, and I'm going to change everything up yep. in terms of my conditioning, my training, etc. Because of this particular fight, am I wrong in thinking that? Good point. Good point. Mm. Maybe that's why Triple G's three to one favorite. Mm. Good point. Man, you're a promoter because this is your fighter, and you're very confident in Canelo. But there you go praising Triple G too. This is the promoter, Oscar <laughs> De La Hoya, right here with hey. Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Hey, hey, and you know what I love? You know what I love? I have not once talked about how many pay per views mm -hmm. is, did the gate sell out. Right. Listen, it's not about that. It's about the fight. Mm. It is about the fight. Forget about the business side of it. Forget about how much money they're gonna make. Mm -hmm. People want to see a great fight, and then the money will come. Oscar, I'm telling you, man, everywhere I've been, I have not run into one human being in the United States. Man, I've been all over the place the last couple of months. I've been everywhere. Okay, I have not wanted, I have not run into one person 
who says they were going to miss this fight. Not one person. Everyone is looking forward to this. So it, it's a it's a fan's dream, man. This yeah, is this I, I, is this my is, dream. I'm telling you right now, it's my dream. I'll be the first to tell you. Oscar De La Hoya right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. So with all of that being said, what are you worried about for your fighter in this fight? If there's one thing that stands out in your mind that has you concerned, what would it be? First round knockout. That's it. What are you talking about? First round knockout. Canelo. If, if Canelo gets knocked out in one round, then. I can't see that kid. That, that's almost blasphemous hey, that you would say something you like asked that. You asked me. Canelo Albert, why, why would you be concerned about you a first know. round? Because you're you cold? Because you're cold? I you're, mean, you're, what, because what, what? you're cold. Uh, because, uh, hey, because these two guys, when the first bell rings, they're going to run at each other. Mm. Somebody might get dropped. Somebody got, might get knocked out. See, Oscar, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I can't, Far be it for me to refute a 10 time champion, not. but I really don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to be measured at first. I think they're going to be safe for a first round. I think they're going to use jabs. They're going to throw some punches here and there, but I think they're going to feel each other out just a touch. I don't think this will be Hagler Hearns round one. It might be Hagler Hearns after that, but I don't think it'll be Hagler Hearns round one. I, I think it's going to be a continuation of Hagler Hearns. Mm. I really do. We'll see. What is Canelo going to do if he wins this fight? Where do you go? Where do you go from here? Because I don't see anybody else out there really for either of these guys at the middleweight division. And you're telling me he's going to stay at the middleweight? No, he'll stay. He'll stay at middleweight. Uh, uh, he might. He might uh, in in a couple of years go up to uh, 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 168, mm. where we know where we know uh, you know who's there. Yes. Mr. Andre Ward, I assume. Ooh. I assume. I assume you realize well, the best I mean, pound for pound fight in the world, Andre in Ward. The planet. That, in that, the planet. In the planet. That dude, that dude, and what you going to do with that one? I right. mean, come on now. Come on. Hey. Before you, I let you get on out of here, you talked so much about what this fight is going to mean to the sport of boxing. What is it going to mean to the career of Canelo Alvarez if he wins this? This is, this is the, the fight that defines his, his, his legacy. You know, this is the first fight that will define his legacy. Um, same for Triple G. That's why they're going to come out swinging in the first round. Nobody wants to lose this fight. Nobody wants to make it a bad fight. This is the fight that's going to define their legacy. This fight you will talk about for many years to come. How much did losing, do you believe losing to Mayweather will help him in this fight? It's everything. It changed everything. It it it, uh, it taught him. It taught him what experience is all about. You know, it taught him. Uh, it taught him that you're not invincible. You know, um, I love the fact that Jacobs gave Triple G a run for his money mm -hmm. because now Triple G knows he's not invincible. Now he has trained like there's no tomorrow for this fight. And now we're going to see a real fight before on I let Saturday you, night. Before I let you get on out of here, let me veer away from the fighters themselves and talk about Golden Boy Promotions because you deserve so much credit <clears throat> for putting this fight together. Canelo's number one. That's your number one guy. That's our guy. Who's number two? Ooh, for Golden Boy. Boy. Ooh, for boy. Golden Boy. For Golden Boy. It's self-promotion. I mean, I, I want to give you the promotion. You deserve it. We probably, mm -hmm. I mean, I can say uh, Miguel Cotto, mm -hmm. you know, who's still going strong. I right. mean, he just had a, an amazing win on HBO a couple weeks ago. Yeah. He wants to fight at the Garden in December. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to fight David Lemieux. Oh, oh, right. I'm worried about that one. Right. I'm worried about that one. I mean, <laughs> hey, we got to keep making a good fight. Just see what David Lemieux did to that kid, Chris Stevens, yeah. Curtis Stevens. I mean, I mean, put him to sleep right in front of his, right in front of his mama. That was that was very bad. <laughs> that was his mama standing ringside and everything. Guys, we, yeah, we got to make the good fights. We got to make the good fights happen, man. So have you? This is a different subject because Cotto's your guy. I've never recovered from Margarito cheating here. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, how is that? I mean, to 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 turn your fist into yeah. just a cast. I thought. Listen, that to me is why I've worried about Kodo. That's the only reason. Right. Because somebody cheated exactly. to do that to him. He was what, never the same. After he was that. never the same. Never the same. Can he, can he ever be the same again? I think so. I, I think this fight here uh, against Kamagai he had on HBO the night of McGregor yep. Mayweather. Yeah. Um. He. Uh, it, it was a vintage. It was a vintage Kodo. Mm -hmm. We saw, I saw a vintage Cotto. I mean, he was right. throwing punches left and right. He was yep. using his footwork. He was, uh, and Kamagai was just coming at him straight in. Yep. So uh, I think that gave him confidence. And um, will we see a Cotto uh, 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 prior to uh, uh, facing Margarito? 
I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. Right. You know, but uh, but uh, but seeing the Cotto, seeing the Cotto uh, that I saw um, that that other night, um, you know, it it, it 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 looked it looked like the vintage Cotto. Everybody want to talk to you? Go handle your business. You know, I'll see you. All right, I will see. Oh you. yeah, Oscar De La Hoya, my man, promoter extraordinaire, the man responsible for delivering the fight of the decade as far as I'm concerned, Triple G versus Canelo right here with Stephen A. Supremacy. Radio. You know it. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Listen up, y'all. I want y'all to get, if you don't listen to me about anything else, listen to me about this. Every day I come on the air, you see me energized, don't you? You know why you see me energized? Because I get some sleep. That's why, damn it. Sleep is important. When you don't get it, your mood, you're just blah, you're feeling lackadaisical, you're just moody, you don't want to talk to nobody, you don't feel like working, you don't feel like doing anything, because damn it, you're exhausted, and you can't take it. And guess what? If you think you're sleeping, but you're snoring, you ain't getting the proper rest anyway. Never mind the fact that it's disrespectful, it make people, makes people don't want to be around you. If you're a man, you got a woman. If you're a woman, you got a man. And your partner's around you, and you're snoring all the damn time. They don't like you very much. Let's just call it what it is. They just don't. So you know what I did to alleviate that concern? I got myself a Z, but that's what I did. I'm talking about that deep, deep REM sleep, REM sleep when you start dreaming and wake up totally refreshed and relaxed. It's something I needed to get, and that's what, exactly what I ended up getting. It's called Z-Y-P-P-A-H, which is happy Z spelled backwards. So go to Zipa.com. That's Zipa.com, and get the one thing that is guaranteed to get rid of your snoring, and you can experience Zipa sleep. Go to Zipa.com to get that Zipa sleep I'm talking about. It's Zipa.com, y'all. Z-Y-P-P-A-H, happy Z spelled backwards. Back here at the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN. Radio 866 729 ESPN. It's 866 729 3776. Before I get back to the calls, let me say this. <clears throat> there was something that took place last night in Boston. Some fans got in with a huge banner. The banner hung over there. Umpires had to stop the game. Have the individuals removed. Have the banner removed. The banner said racism is as American as baseball. There were three white individuals holding that that banner. Some people took it as if, you know, it was a good thing. Talking about America and racism and so what? Get over it. Others like myself and many others took it as folks bringing attention to racism that exists and how we all need to be socially conscientious enough to conquer it. Let me say this. See, I'm into being productive. I'm not into just bloviating and talking and, you know, whistling into the wind and then it just fades into the twilight. Nothing ever gets done about it or whatever the case may be. If you can't do something about it, shut the hell up about it. Because just complaining about stuff over and over and over again ain't going to get things done. That's why I constantly lean towards what Chris Rock said to me a couple of years ago when a network approached him about hosting a symposium on racism a town hall on racism. And it was a bunch of black people that were supposed to be there were willing to show up and talk about it. And Chris Rock said, absolutely not. That's a waste of my damn time. You want me to host a panel discussion or host a town hall on racism in America? I don't want anything but white panelists and white folks in the audience. I'm black. We know what the hell racism is. We know what it looks like. We know how long it's existed. Damn it, we know why. But we want to hear from them. Those people who have those racist tendencies feels that has, you know, harbors that racial conscious. We want to hear from them. That's what Chris Rock said to the networks. And they went, wow, wow, we understand respectfully. We really do. And they get it. They never gave him the damn town hall, though. You know why? Because people don't want to sit up there and really, really talk about it. The real culprits that harbor racism in their soul. They don't want to talk about it. And so at some point in time, We just got to grow up and we got to recognize that these problems are going to exist. Yeah, you can mention it. Yeah, you can complain about it. But the thing that I'm cognizant of is making sure that I don't use something as a crutch. So in the event that failure comes around, somebody is looking to lean on that as the cause for their failure. Damn it, conquer it. Whatever we're dealing with right now is a racist society. Is it anything compared to what our parents dealt with? How about our grandparents? How about our great-grandparents? Can we drink waters from the same water fountain? Can we eat from the same restaurants? Can we go to the same schools? Aren't they desegregated? 
Ladies and gentlemen, I am not going on this diatribe to tell you that racism isn't real, it is intangible and plausible, that it doesn't exist. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you to ignore it. I'm not telling you not to mention it. I'm simply pointing out this insatiable appetite that we have to address it. Why don't we put our energies towards conquering it? And by that, I mean individual by individual, community by community, family by family, before we even get into the form of a nation itself. I have faced racism all my life. It hasn't stopped me. I hang around with a bunch of brothers who have faced racism all their life. It hasn't stopped them. I got news for y'all, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be very, very uncomfortable, what I'm about to tell you. Are you ready for this? Are you ready to stop the presses? I happen to know a bunch of white folks who are not racist. Not racist at all. They just want to live their life and do their thing. And they want you to do your thing. And they want you to leave them alone. And they, you want to leave them alone. And everybody's happy. I tell folks this all the time. You know, we got situations where people are at the jobs and they're complaining and they're going off all the time. People that I work with, I, I have never invited them over my house to Thanksgiving dinner. I'll be damned if I'm interested in exchanging Christmas gifts with them. And I don't give a damn if they don't want to do it with me. That don't mean we hate each other. All of this need, this kumbaya moment that we looking for. Are we really, really looking for that? Ladies and gentlemen, I just had the pleasure of treating myself to a new house. My house is lovely. I work with a bunch of white folks that I like, genuinely. Not a damn one of them have been invited to my house. And they won't be. We work together. We ain't boys. And, it, and, and, and those who are will get invited because they're my boy. Not because they're white or black. It's because they're my boy. But this notion, it's the, oh, we, we walk the streets with one another and we work together and we have to vibe with one another. Says who? As long as somebody is living and letting you live, focus on that. I only say that to say this. The tag is right. The sign is right. Racism is American as baseball. Fine. Fair enough. But there's white people holding that sign. Because you got an abundance of white people in America who are against racism. And if we're being honest, just like we got some black folks who are for it. Quick to use it as a crutch. To excuse their own inability to be on a come up. Now, is that me calling out my own? Hell with it. Yeah, it's me. You know why? Because I come from a community filled with ancestors who faced far more daunting circumstances than I did and found a way to thrive. And damn it, I'm doing the same. Yes, you speak out against racism. Yes, you commit yourself to conquering it. Yes, you find it unacceptable. You do what you got to do. But please understand that while doing so, everyone ain't the villain. Sometimes you can end up being your own because you focused on things other people ain't even thinking about. It's just a thought. One of many. Want to be a part of the show? Hit Stephen A. Up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. What if I told you some stories you need to hear to believe? It was the rivalry of the hammer and the nail, and Boston was the nail. You would hear Yankee suck at a funeral, Yankee suck at a football game. The second we said Yankee Suck t-shirts, people just cried around us and bought them as fast as we could sell them. The all-new 30 for 30 podcast. Subscribe now on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. 30 for 30 podcast is presented by Mini. We're finding the best sports stories for you right now. And to do that, we're behind the wheel of the new Mini Countryman, the biggest Mini yet. Please proceed to the highlighted round. To find great sports stories, you have to get out into the world and follow your instincts. That's where the new Mini Countryman's all-wheel drive comes in handy. 
With all four, we can chase down a story in the city, the country, and most places in between. No matter what story you're chasing, the new Mini Countryman will help you find it. It's available now, and so are 30 for 30 podcasts. Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm-hmm. <laughs> and shades. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. What if I told you some stories you need to hear to believe? Everywhere you went, Dan and Dave, Dan and Dave. And that's these two athletes that are going to go to the Olympics this year, and it's going to be settled in Barcelona. When Reebok approached Dave and I, the first thing both of us said, you know neither one of us are on this team yet. The thought never, ever crossed my mind that Dan nor Dave would not make that Olympic team. The all-new 30 for 30 podcast. Subscribe now on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. 30 for 30 podcast is presented by Mini. We're finding the best sports stories for you right now. And to do that, we're behind the wheel of the new Mini Countryman, the biggest Mini yet. Please proceed to the highlighted round. To find great sports stories, you have to get out into the world and follow your instincts. That's where the new Mini Countryman's all-wheel drive comes in handy. With all four, we can chase down a story in the city, the country, and most places in between. No matter what story you're chasing, the new Mini Countryman will help you find it. It's available now, and so are 30 for 30 podcasts. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio. That's 710 ESPN LA. It's 98.7 FM New York City. And, of course, nationwide over the airways of ESPN Radio. Sirius XM style. Channel 80. Number to call up, as always, is 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. Let me tell you something right now. Got a lot of stuff to get to today, and I will. I truly, truly will. I promise. NFL stuff, some NBA stuff, Tyron of Kobe's jersey. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm going to get into. Kevin Durant making news with his new sneaker and some of the things that he has to say. I'm going to get into that. LeVar Ball, the father of Lonzo Ball, number two overall pick in the NBA draft for the Los Angeles Lakers. His eccentric, wild, and crazy self. He showed up on first take this morning, acting buck wild as always. Uh, I'll, listen, I'll, I'll tell you the latest preposterous thing that came out of his mouth. All of these things are things I'm going to get into. Might even get into a little college football today, no doubt about that. The list goes on and on. But listen, I how can I put this? You know, there are people in this industry, particularly people that, uh, you know, does, and on some occasions it's people that work you know, work in the same building as me or whatever the case. Me, you know, they got things to say. And, and and listen, ladies and gentlemen, we all put on our big boy pants and big boy clothes here. And you sit in the kind of seat that I sit in where you have your own national radio, national radio show. You've got your own uh, national television show and stuff like that. And, you know, you're critiquing things. You're critiquing people. You're critiquing their actions, et cetera, et cetera. You got to take it. And so I don't mind. I really, really don't. Uh, but I never give it because I don't believe in talking about my colleagues the exception will be today and the exception will be today because there are people that work that are associated with espn damn it i'm just gonna say it they don't know basketball i I just i just can't take it anymore i just can't take it i've seen this list that came out some list from espn we don't know who formulated the list we don't know specifically who selected whom and all of this other stuff we have no clue ladies and gentlemen we really really don't okay i don't know who they are but if they're listening and they had anything to do with carmelo anthony being ranked as the 64th the 64th best player in the nba i want to let the world know your basketball card needs to be stripped and you have no business on earth Talking and discussing the game and analyzing and evaluating the game. You don't know basketball. You're just ignorant and you're wasting my time. 
64 players in the NBA better than Carmelo Anthony? In what world? In what world? You have got to be kidding me. And it's like, listen, ESPN, you know, you've got a lot of folks that hide behind that logo, those four letters. I wish they would come out and tell me who they are because it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to, I didn't even have to look. But when I learned who they had listed ahead of Carmelo Anthony, it just, it, I knew it was just going to make me more irritated. Danny Green of the Spurs, really? Really? Harrison Barnes of the Dallas Mavericks, really? Really? They even got this dude, Sixers forward Robert Covington, ahead of Carmelo Anthony, Danilo Gallinari, Drew Holiday. Really? Really? Now, listen, I know that Carmelo Anthony doesn't play defense sometimes. When you have the responsibility that he has on the offensive side of the ball, you take plays off, and usually folks elect to do it on the defensive side of the ball. Not excusing it. Not excusing it. I know he's a ball hog at times. Doesn't move the basketball. Doesn't want to pass him, pass the basketball the way that he should. As Larry Brown would say, isn't always playing the right way. I get it. I understand it. Totally. I get that reality. I really, really do. But ladies and gentlemen, this dude is a near 25-point game scorer for his career. If Carmelo Anthony averages, if, if it, listen, listen to this. I want y'all to listen to me and listen to me carefully now because this is this kind of stuff is important. If Carmelo Anthony averages, I think, 20 points a game this season, ladies and gentlemen, if he does that for this season, the only players in NBA history to average at least 20 points per game in each of their first 15 seasons in the National Basketball Association is Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the greatest scorer in the history of basketball. But you got 64 players better than Carmelo Anthony. See, this is the kind of nonsense that shreds credibility. Carmelo Anthony is not perfect. Carmelo Anthony is very imperfect. Be honest with you, as much as I love the brother, I am sick and tired of him constantly prioritizing money over winning. At some point in time, you're in your 14th year entering your 15th season. It should make you sick to your stomach that you on banana boats with a LeBron James who's been to, to, to like, like, like eight or nine NBA finals. Eight, actually. But you're with LeBron James and, and, and Dwayne Wade who's been to five NBA Finals, both three-time NBA champions. It should make you sick to your stomach that you are around dudes that have been to the Finals so often and you have never even made an appearance in the NBA Finals. I'm not absolving Carmelo Anthony from everything. But to sit there and look at him at 6'8", 240, with a game you can shoot the three. You can shoot mid-range. You can get to the free throw line. You can post up and play with your back to the basket. You can dri- you can score off the dribble. You can create your own shot. To be one of the prolific scorers of the modern day era and to tell me that this man is ranked 64th, it is an embarrassment and a disgrace to ESPN. That that was even that, that that that's even subject to being disseminated to the masses. I, I'm to the point where I need people to put their names to this stuff. I need to know who the hell did this. I want names. Who the hell made that decision? Who are you? It's embarrassing. You don't know basketball. Now, Melo's not perfect, as I've said, and I've articulated the reasons why. It still don't negate the fact that he's one of the best. People talking about him like he's straight garbage. What world are you living in? It's embarrassing. And like I said, you're listening to a guy right now, ladies and gentlemen, that covered Allen Iverson every day for the first 10 years of his career in Philadelphia. 
as a beat writer and then the NBA columnist. I watched Allen Iverson ball hog. I watched Allen Iverson dribble the basketball. I watched Allen Iverson break people down with the crossover and everything else, but rarely passed. I watched Allen Iverson never play defense. Last time I checked, last summer, I was in Springfield, Massachusetts, watching and listening as this man was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Because Larry Brown, the great Larry Brown, along with Billy King and Pat Croce, said this is the talent we have. We have to put requisite parts around him that fit. That's what we have to do. We can't sit up there and just expect him to be something he's not. Nobody's done that for Melo. The closest they came to it was when they traded Chauncey Billups to Denver, and they went to the Western Conference Finals that year and ran into Kobe and Shaq. That's the only thing that stopped Denver from going to the finals. Carmelo Anthony is not perfect. There's a lot of things about his game and about his mentality towards winning as opposed to chasing those dollars that I'd wish he'd modify to some degree. But to talk about this dude, like there's 63 players. And by the way, Lonzo Ball, who's never played the NBA game, is on the list. To talk about this dude with such disrespect is appalling. It's just that simple. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Back with your calls and more in a minute. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Let's go to Dwight and Yonkers. because you're live with Stephen A. What's up, Dwight? How are you? How you doing, Steve? Um, Stephen A. Real quick, all right. I, I agree with you with Melo. I, I think Melo should be in the top fifteen, but I could be wrong. That's my opinion. I hope they got the the one and two right. Durant and Curry, not no LeBron. I hope that. My opinion only. But Stephen I- A. Can I talk to you about earlier about um? Your first take with LeVar Ball? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. He is crazy. Yes. He think um, his son is better than LeBron. Not yet. Give him time. He might be, but no way. And for him, 50 wins, is he crazy? Well, first, first, first of all, he ain't going to never be better than LeBron James. Let's get that yeah. out the way. Yeah. He's, saying that, he's saying that, you know, Steph Curry, you, you know, he, he, he could end up being better than Steph Curry. You know, I, I, listen, LeVar Ball is crazy. All right. I love him, though. I don't like everything that he does, and he knows that, but I'm very fond of him. Um, I think he's a decent dude. He's just, you know, it's working for him right now, and he's milking it for all his worth. I can't hate on him for that, but some of the stuff that he says is clearly outlandish and utterly ridiculous. There is no doubt about it, and I'm not about to make any excuses for him. All right. Thank you, Stephen A. Thanks you, a that's lot. That's all I have to say. You have Take a good it easy. Day. Nuno, when you get a chance, get that sound of LeVar Ball on first take this morning. You know, with the nonsense that he was spewing about how the Lakers are going to win 50 games. The man has lost his mind, lost his damn mind. Lakers ain't winning no 50 games, y'all. You better stop that. Magic said the right words. We on to come up. We sold out the summer league. The interest has been revitalized in the franchise, et cetera, et cetera. Magic Johnson came on the air and admitted that he only went to a couple of games last year because he just couldn't take it. He couldn't take watching these guys anymore. Couldn't take it. So he went to two games. I mean, think about that. That's kind of stuff that he says. That's kind of stuff he's getting down with. It is what it is. Chris in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A., good morning. Uh, Real quick, I was was watching First Take today. Very entertaining show, man, honestly, with all LeVar. I have a question for you. What's more more blasphemous and outrageous, the fact that LeVar thinks that Lakers are going to win 50 games or that Carmelo's at – Slot number 64 in the power rankings. What's more black? No, 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 no. I, what, I, I, I didn't hear the first part. You said or Melo, the 64th in the rankings, but before that you said what? Uh, that LeVar said the Lakers are going to win 50-plus games. I think, well, I think what's more preposterous is, uh, mm-hmm. is uh, 
believe it or not, Lakers winning 50 games. I think they're both preposterous. I don't think Melo should be at 64, and I don't think that um, anybody should be thinking the Lakers are going to win 50 games. No, not at all, Stephen. I'm a, and I'm a, I'm a Laker fan at heart. I'm a Laker guy born and raised. But that's, that's, it's just crazy. And a lot of stuff he was going on said Steph's not going to guard him. But like I said, he, I think he realized the son has his bullseye in his back, but you said something that was that resonated with me when you mentioned to LeVar on first take. You said that, and I, I don't want to misquote you, but you said that, um, gosh, what did you say? Basically that the Lakers – he has to. He, he has to cast. His son has to cast a check. No, no, no. I, I, said, I said. I said. I said. He done. He's done. Cut checks that his son may not be able to cash. That's what I said. Correct. 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 So I don't want to misquote you, but and I, I, I don't know if he realized that or not, Stephen A. He does, what? but. It's break more pressure to his son and like and he don't, and he, he don't care. Uh-huh. He don't care. He believes his son can handle it, and he knows his son better than any of us do. Now, I didn't see his son handle it in the NCAA tournament against Kentucky. When I bet him that Kentucky yeah. was going to beat him, and and and, and right. De'Aaron Fox put on a show, and his son was nowhere to be found. You know, he had to man up to that. But he believes in his son, and he believes his son is going to be that great. And he doesn't even believe that his son is going to end up being better than his other son, Lamelo. So he's very, very confident. That's what it is. So far, he ain't wrong, though. He said his son was going to be a Laker. He said that while his son was still playing at UCLA. He said, my son's entering the draft, and he's going to be a Laker. Watch. And it happened. So I got to respect that where it's due. Appreciate the call, though, man. Thank you. Brandon in South Carolina, talk to me. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Stephen A? Now, the whole Melo thing, like, Melo's a good player at this point in his career, and he's been great throughout a lot of it. But his lack of dedication to winning, his his enthusiasm for winning has never been there. And I don't know if you remember this from a conversation we had last year, but it should probably pop up in your head. All he is is a healthy Jay Cutler. He'll smile for you, but he don't give a damn about the winning. Jay Cutler just don't give a damn. I look at them as a well, 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 listen, listen. This is where I get disgusted at you. That ain't the question. Answer the question first and then go on your little diatribes. Are there 63 players in the NBA better than Carmelo Anthony? There's not 63, but is no, it no, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. All I'm trying to say to you is this. I can respect any criticism that you give towards him. I understand that. But answer the question first in the future. Don't call up here and act like there's justification for people who are supposed to know basketball to list 63 players better than him, and it includes Danilo Gallinari and Harrison Barnes and 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 and, and Lonzo Ball, who's never played an NBA game yet, and and some dude Robert Covington for the Sixers. Come on, Brandon. Come on. Come on. No, I- I agree with you. Lonzo Ball haven't played a game. Danny Green can't even get his own shot. Patrick Beverly is stupid. Gallinari, I get that. But is it far-fetched to say that about 45 or 50 players are better than him? No. Not at no, my, I, I think I think it is. I think it is because what you, what you have to understand is this. You are disgusted with Melo. That's a testament to his greatness as a talent. What we lament is is what appears to be his priorities. Like, for example, I don't think Jay Cutler gives a damn. I think Melo does, but not nearly as much about about everything else as he does about the money. Melo is going to get his money first. Melo proved that because, as I reported on many occasions, it was never supposed to be Chris Bosh in Miami. It was supposed to be LeBron, D-Wade, and Melo. And Melo signed the five years instead of an out after three years because he wanted the 80 million guarantee from Denver. He did not want to sit up there and pass up those dollars. And so thinking like that and not having the foresight to bet on himself and his freedom and what he would be at that particular juncture in 2010 hurt him. That's why he was stuck, and that's why he had to force his way out of Denver a year later, and he ended up in New York when he could have been in Brooklyn and all of this other stuff because he prioritized the money. So you're right to be frustrated, but understand the frustration emanates from the fact that he's that damn good and somebody that damn good doesn't get rated outside the top 50 damn it they don't get rated outside the top 30 i can't think of 29 players better than carmelo anthony i got a list right now 
I got a list right now. In my well, you're not gonna, I'm not going to. Well, you're going to have to call back another time because I'm not going to let you spout all 29 names. Hey, well, that ain't going to happen. Well, right, go yeah, ahead. So Mello, I mean, he's, a, he's a good passer. I mean, Melo can pass the rock. He's really a really, really great passer when he wants to. He's good, but, I mean, I got one question for you before I go. Now, considering all the moves that was made this summer, you look at Melo, he's just sitting over there, especially when the cold Kyrie thing opened up. Nah, I don't want to go to Cleveland. You got to opt out after this year. Try to go and get a chip with your buddy. See what you can make happen. No, what happened? What like, happened is what happened is is that he wanted to go to Houston with CP3 because they're both represented by CAA, and when CP3 decided to 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 leave uh, uh, two hundred and seven million on the table and take his talents to Houston. Basically, CAA came up with the concoction that the combination of CP3 and Mello will ensure that both get their money. Whereas if you go to Cleveland, you go after that chip, you may not get the money you want next year. Neither would CP3 after next season. That's why they're trying to get to Houston together. That's the only reason Carmelo Anthony took his name off the list in terms of willing to waive his no-trade clause to go to Cleveland. Got to run, Brandon. Appreciate the call, 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-729-3776. More of your calls in a minute. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! In a few minutes, I'm going to let y'all hear what LeVar Ball had to say, what he spewed out of his mouth earlier this morning on ESPN's first take. But for now, I'll get back to the phone calls about Carmelo. And you know something else, too, that's worth discussing? Listen, <clears throat> last three days in L.A. have been very, very uh, uh, productive. The great Jerry West came on the show Monday. Irvin Magic Johnson, along with Snoop Dogg, came on first take yesterday. LeVar Ball, Freddie Roach, J.B. Smooth, Fame Curb Your Enthusiasm, you know, new show, new season, season debut, October 1st. Don't miss that. I got to tell y'all something. And I got to put it to you straight. It's like this, man. I'm looking at L.A. right now. And it's, it's as a native New Yorker who obviously travels a lot because I love, you know, doing the NBA and boxing and all of this other stuff. You know what's really bothering me? How exciting things are. In L.A., between Lonzo Ball and CP3 being gone and Jerry West being in there competing with Magic Johnson for supremacy in the L.A. Southern California market, nothing but excitement. And in New York, it's straight garbage. I mean, we're speculating that the Brooklyn Nets may be the worst team in basketball, thereby gift wrapping the Cleveland Cavaliers the number one overall pick next year in the NBA draft because they got that pick from Boston. All right? Who got it from Brooklyn in the Paul Pierce KG trade years ago? And the New York Knicks is just it's 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 just dysfunctional. Like, you are James Dolan. You're a billionaire. And what's the biggest thing you made news for this year? Having Charles Oakley removed from the arena. Now, granted, they say that Charles Oakley was being very, very disrespectful. He denies it, whatever the case may be. It's kind of hard for me to imagine Charles Oakley not saying anything, just keeping his mouth shut like he says he did. Knicks clearly have a different story, but it is what it is. But you're James Dolan. That's what you made headlines for. That and Phil Jackson's flagrant ineptitude and negligence as an executive in a, in a sport of basketball. I mean, Phil Jackson, left time, made sure he got his $24 million, though. Made sure he got his money. Like, pulled the Brinks robbery job. He made sure he pulled that off. But in New York, you have nothing. Nothing. They stink. And to me, the remedy is clear. I have no problem with Steve Mills being the president of basketball operations now. I love the fact they hired my man Scott Perry. Long overdue for Scott Perry to get a job as a general manager in the sport of the National Basketball Association. I got no issues with it. 
But could you please pull the trifecta? Why is Jeff Hornacek here? Why? He's not a game changer. I mean, no disrespect. Jeff Hornacek knows basketball. He played with John Stockton and Carl Malone. They almost won not one but two championships. Had they not run into Michael Jordan, he'd have a couple of rings. I get it. I understand. But Jeff Hornacek and New York don't mix. I'm not saying the man doesn't deserve to be a head coach. I'm just saying New York, we don't need just a head coach. We need a spiritual and inspirational leader. We need somebody that can galvanize the citizens of New York City and send a message that will disseminate to the masses. Believe in us, we're going in the right direction. And I believe that man to be Mark Jackson, my colleague at ESPN, no doubt, my buddy, no doubt, putting it on full blast. But damn it, I was tight with Isaiah Thomas. Didn't stop me from getting on the air and telling y'all he had to go. He had to be fired. I'm going to do my job now. And thank God that Isaiah Thomas, by the way, doing a hell of a job running the Liberty. And I personally think that he'll be back in the ambient level. And I think he does a great job as an analyst on television. I don't happen to believe that he ran the Knicks into the ground the way the people say he did because of basketball reasons. I think he was distracted. Whether it's lawsuits, whether it's mom being ill, whether it's Stephon Marbury moving right next door to him. I mean, he had a whole bunch of issues. But that's neither here nor there. Mark Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, Queens is in the building. Murdoch Ave, O'Connell Park, St. John's University, Final Four with Chris Mullen and Willie Glass and Walter Berry in the crew. And then he goes pro, and he's the rookie of the year for the New York Knicks. That Mark Jackson needs to be back in New York. We need somebody to look at who's standing in front of the microphone every day who is not a player that gives us a reason to believe that this franchise is going in the right direction. Jeff Hornacek said, can't do that for you. Good man, good coach. He can't do that for you. We don't care what he has to say. We really don't. That's why you need Mark Jackson. And I can't believe that a billionaire is going to penny pinch and keep Jeff Hornacek around for the sole express purpose that he's got a couple of years left on his deal and he don't want to pay the man for doing nothing. Damn it, give New Yorkers something they want for a damn change. When you hired Phil Jackson, we didn't know that you were never going to allow, that you were going to let him get away with never coaching. We didn't know that his definition of road trips was going to be trips to LA so he could be next to, near his ex woman, Jeannie Buss. We didn't know all that. Mark Jackson ain't going to have that problem. When the team goes, he'll go. When it's time to speak in front of that microphone, he's going to be the first to do it. You need somebody that's a spokesman for this franchise who we can trust. And that ain't no damn Jeff Hornacek. Lakers got it in Irvin Magic Johnson. But guess what? Luke Walton ain't a bad person to be speaking on your behalf either. In the Clippers, I don't give a damn what Jerry West says. Consulting my foot. He's a consultant, all right. Right in the air, the billionaire owner who's going to do what he has. Doc Rivers, yeah. But right now, he's hurting. J.J. Reddick, gone. Jamal Crawford, gone. CP3 turned down $200 million plus just so he wouldn't play for the man. You find very, very few people that love Doc Rivers more than me because I love him. But this has not been a good summer for him. But it's excitement in L.A. And he's still got a team that can win 50 games. What does New York have? A Brooklyn Nets team none of us care about outside of that borough. And a New York Knicks franchise that we're perpetually ashamed of. Mark Jackson's the answer. 
It's just that simple. 866-729-ESPN. More of your calls in a minute. This is Stephen A. Smith's show on ESPN Radio. Want to be a part of this show? It's Stephen A. Up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! To the phones we go right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's go to Wendell in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, man. How are you? Hey, hey, I'm, I'm well, Stephen A. Thanks for asking, man. As usual, you're on point with, you know, pretty much everything you mentioned this morning. So I'm going to be mindful to be concise. First of all, let me address your initial question this morning about Carmelo's number 63 ranking. Let me give you 64, an emphatic. 64, 64. Okay, well, 63 others better than him. Let me give you an emphatic negative on that one. Let's be mindful that uh, basketball is still a team sport, and you got to consider his supporting cast in, 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 the, in the equation also. It's a team sport like most team sports where individual accomplishments are highlighted. So let's consider his supporting cast on that one. And in regards to LeVar Ball, Come on, it is what it is. He's just being a father, supporting his his offspring. I mean, hey, he's a little delusional, no, but he's not an absentee father. Let's give him credit where credit's due. Well, on listen, that listen, regard. listen, listen. We, I've never said that about him, and I know you know that. Uh, but a lot of people try to attack this man as a father, and I really got a problem with that. I got a problem with him taking the kids off the court in summer league when they're playing, you know, taking your ball and going home because you don't like the way the game's being officiated. I got a problem with the pressure that he puts on his son sometimes with all of his bloviating. But the reality is, is that he raised his kids. Um, he obviously did a good job because they all seem like good kids. He believes in them. He's not committing any crimes. And sometimes people go a bit far in regards to the manner in which they talk about him. And I do have a problem with that. In that case, Stephen, I, I always, you know, I always want to believe that in parenting, there is no guidelines, not like instruction where there's no blueprint to be a perfect parent, you know, but in as far as the statement about the 50 wins, now, is that over a two-season stretch? Nope. You know? He's talking about next season. He said next <laughs> oh, season no, they're going to no. win 50 and they go into the playoffs. I got to go, <laughs> Wendell, but that's what he said. That's what he said, and something's wrong with them, no doubt. Lenny in North Carolina, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, buddy. What's going on, Stephen A.? I ain't talked I'm to you in a while. How you feeling? I'm doing all right, man. Go ahead, buddy. All right. First off, I love talking to Jonathan when Jonathan answers the phone because we talk Notre Dame and – the Irish are actually not bad. They just they should have won that game this weekend, but that's neither here nor there. Number two, how could you put Covington above Carmelo Anthony? Are you kidding me? Don't they ask your opinion on these? They didn't ask me a damn thing. Stuff? They didn't ask me a damn thing. They didn't ask me a damn thing. <laughs> Obviously not. Obviously not because they got him sixty four. He's nine spots above Carmelo. Are nine spots? It's, who? You need to find out who look, man, is look, man. doing these they got, things. Lenny, they, they, they got they got Lonzo. They got Lonzo Ball ahead of Mount Carmelo. It, it, ain't played one game. Ain't played one game. Not one. Ain't played Not one. one. Ain't played so one. yeah, it, 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 you you need to get in there and be like, look, y'all need to ask me, Jay Billis, and uh, Seth, and all these other good people who know basketball about this because that's ridiculous. It don't make no sense. It really, really doesn't. It's embarrassing. I, I, I was waiting for you. I, I heard it last night on Bomani's show last night on the ride home, and I was like, man, I knew Stephen ain't going to have a ball with this one tomorrow. It don't make no sense. It's, I'm, I'm just looking at it. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Right behind him is Marcus Smart. Do you understand? You know that Danny Green for the Spurs is ahead of him on the list too, right? Yeah, Danny Green. Yeah, Danny, Danny and Green. I love Danny and Green. I like and I like Danny Green. And I like yeah, Danny Green, but, but he's ahead he's of Melo. Harrison no. Harrison Barnes is ahead of Melo. Yeah, he, Harrison Barnes. Whoever whoever did that need to be drug tested, as you would say. I, I don't have the patience for it. Thanks a lot, bro. You take it easy, man. We'll talk soon. Dre and Queens, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Dre. Hi, how you doing, Stephen A. I'm a huge I'm all right. fan, by the way. I just want to. I appreciate know. it. I appreciate it. Go ahead, real quick, buddy. Go ahead. Now, my question is, and this is not to justify his rank on the list. Okay. But my question is, do you think Carmelo Anthony, after that 54-win season, especially last year, do you think they should have at least made a playoff appearance? Yes. 
Absolutely. But, but but you also have to remember the very next season when they won like 37 games, you have to remember that Tyson Chandler, um, his mother uh, was suffering from cancer. He wasn't practicing with the team. Uh, he would literally go to a game. Uh, James Dolan would let him get his private jet. He would come in on a game. He would come in for the game and then immediately leave after the game. He wasn't, um, he wasn't practicing with the team. You had other injuries and Mike Woodson was a lame duck coach as well. So you had all of that going on because Phil Jackson was on his way. So that's the kind of stuff that can't be ignored either. Yeah. I understand that year, but I'm talking about last year, you know, having, Derek Rose. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't hold anybody account. First of all, Derek Rose wasn't healthy, and then he went a wall, disappearing on the team. Joe Kim Noah was a disastrous signing and pickup uh, because he hadn't fully healed and he was a shell of himself. And Phil Jackson was busy throwing Carmelo under the bus every chance he get. Plus, he was coaching from the stands uh, by making Jeff Hornacek do things that he didn't want to do as coach of this team. So I don't blame any of the players for what happened with the Knicks last year. To me, that was on Phil Jackson. And the dysfunction that he that he allowed to sift through this franchise like a virus. I don't think they should have made the playoffs. That was not next, not last year. Not 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 as much of a mess as last year's as last year was. I disagree with you, but I understand and I appreciate the call. Eight six six seven two nine ESPN is always the number to call up. That's eight six six seven two nine three seven seven six. We're gonna get into some NFL chit chat especially with the Steelers being atop the, the power rankings. I don't understand that. We'll talk about that, get into some more NBA talk and some boxing as well. Canelo, Triple G, we got a lot to talk about. Stick around. This is Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, coming at you. Hour number two, up next. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app. What if I told you all it took was a pair to win it all? Phil Ivey, the most famous gambler in the world, was accused of cheating casinos of multiple millions of dollars. Ivy and a female accomplice. My name is uh, Chang Yin Sam. Everybody call me just Kelly. Kelly's son is probably the most dangerous match player in the world right now. The all new 30 for 30 podcast. Subscribe now on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. 30 for 30 podcast is presented by Mini. We're finding the best sports stories for you right now. And to do that, we're behind the wheel of the new Mini Countryman, the biggest Mini yet. Please proceed to the highlighted round. To find great sports stories, you have to get out into the world and follow your instincts. That's where the new Mini Countryman's all-wheel drive comes in handy. With all four, we can chase down a story in the city, the country, and most places in between. No matter what story you're chasing, the new Mini Countryman will help you find it. It's available now, and so are 30 for 30 podcasts. This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Hour number two. The Stephen A. Smith Show here with you. For the next hour or so over the airwaves of ESPN Radio, Sirius XM Channel Lady. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. A couple of other things that I want to get to. Um, They got the Steelers at the top of the power rankings today. I do not understand how, nor do I understand why. You're playing a Cleveland Browns squad bereft of talent, knowing they're starting a rookie quarterback in Deshaun Kaiser, who didn't look bad. You barely squeaked out a 21-18 victory. How are you atop the rankings? How are you atop the rankings ahead of Kansas City who ramrodded the New England Patriots en route to dropping 42 points on them? How are you ahead of the Oakland Raiders who went into Tennessee against Marcus Mariota, that Tennessee defense, and that running game with, with Murray and Henry, and you beat them on the road? How are you ahead of Green Bay that handled their business against one of the elite defenses in the NFL and the Seattle Seahawks? How are you ahead of Minnesota? even though it was against New Orleans, who showed you their defense is legit. Sam Bradford looked like the second coming to Joe Montana. And this kid, Dalvin Cook, has announced to the world that a new era has arrived. And it is no longer about Adrian Peterson. It's about something else. How do you not know that? How do you not know? I don't get people sometimes. I really, really don't. 
866-729-ESPN. Let's go to Kevin in Wisconsin. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Kev? How are you, man? Hey, how you doing, Stephen A.? I'm good, man. Thank you for calling. What's going on? Okay, the reason why I'm calling is, first of all, to answer your question about Carmelo Anthony. Yes, sir. Uh, no. He, there is not 63 players ahead of him, um, honestly. Uh, even though it's frustrating that he, you know, takes money position over winning, you, you can't deny the talent. Um, there was a time, you know, that I remember that if he honestly could have just focused more on defense and, and his and his physical, uh, you know, fitness, he could have been better at that time better than, than LeBron James. They was kind of right there neck and neck for a minute. Well, here, well let, then, me stop, let me stop right there. He was never the player LeBron James was because Melo's a scorer. LeBron's a player. So true. that's a big that's a big deal. Melo went Melo came into the league looking to drop 30 on you. LeBron don't give a damn if it's 15, 15, and 15. That's the difference. That killer, well, back then he didn't have He definitely didn't have a killer instinct. Yes. Okay, but with that question being at, well, I, I, I put Melo in the top 10, the top uh, 20. E- easily number 15, maybe even more, at least number 10. But with, with that being said, my main reason why I calling you today was I was so proud of you uh, last week when you went into Dallas and you represented with the A-Rod jersey on. Proud. The way, you know, I'm with you 100% <laughs> concerning uh, Dallas fans make me sick. And, and and they so delusional. though. It, it, it's, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And I understand fans are fanatics. Everybody loves their home team. But, you know, with them, it's, it's, it's crazy. But the reason why I'm calling beyond that, you made me proud, but then you picked against my boys. What's up with that, Stephen? Well, because well, well, I didn't trust your defense. I, I, come on, man. Y'all had a pop warner damn secondary last year. You remember that. You remember that experience on against the Redskins on national TV last year. You know what that was like. I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions about that bad man that he is, Aaron Rodgers. And I know Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb and those boys, what they can do for you. And the fact that you got Martellus Bennett, I forgot that he was your tight end, by the way. I actually forgot that he was there now. So that entire Montgomery is obviously, you know, signal, you know, you know, entrenched there as your running back. I ain't got no questions about your offense. I just thought the defense was awful. I, and then I, I and, and guess what? And guess what, Cap? I still don't know. Because the offensive line for the Seattle Seahawks was so putrid, so poor, so pathetic. I'm looking at the offensive line and I'm saying, damn, is it Green Bay's defense or is it that Pete Carroll and that offensive line he put together is that damn bad? I still can't tell, Kevin. Yeah, but see, then the problem is if you watch the way Atlanta played Chicago last week, even if we go down there and win, you're still not going to know. Because they really didn't have a good showing against Chicago. Well, listen, way better than Chicago. No, no, you're way better than Chicago. But the whole point that I'm trying to make to you is that it's not about that. I mean, you ain't going 16-0. I'm going to pick you to win most games with Aaron Rodgers. I just thought the the season starting and Seattle getting Sheldon Richardson from the Jets and that defense being monstrous, along with Russell Wilson being healthy, I didn't think the dude was going to be running for his life all afternoon long against Green Bay. So Green Bay surprised me, and they deserve credit for that but I'm not shocked by their offense at all it's their defense I have no faith in that's my issue with Green Bay I can respect that but at the same time we have owned them the last three times we played yeah. them. and without a without a doubt I knew we were gonna be well I feel you on that but just easy for you to say hanging in Wisconsin and all that stuff that's how you feel I don't I, I I'm not sitting up there with a cheese head on my head being nostalgic and emotional making these picks I was just looking at it objectively and thinking that Green Bay was gonna win I was wrong but I'll be right more than I'm wrong we all know that I gotta go man I appreciate the call let's go to Rick slash Skip in DC, long time big baby. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? So, so the wife, so the wife, so the wife, the wife gave you permission to call. The wife gave you permission to call. Listen, man, I'm a, I'm a busy man. You know, I'm a busy man. Listen, okay, let me let's start off right up, right out the gate. Right. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's so proud of you. And stuff in Dallas, man. Stop, stop playing with us like that, man. How about this cowboy? Let's see each other. I told you what's going to happen this year. Back, Elliot is back. And, and that defense looking good. I don't care nothing about him. Come on, he's so proud of you wearing some clown outfits. Yeah, I'll, I'll save you. Disrespecting us. No, we're not delusional. We who we are. 
Hey Skip. Hey, hey Skip. Hey Skip. I got a question. Hey, I got a question. Hey, hey, hey Rick. Rick, I got a question for you. I got. I got a question for you, Rick. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you. You know. You know what I'm gonna give to you, right? Are you sure? Are you sure your players are gonna be eligible when it counts? Everybody's here. Everybody's there. Right, we, you right. know, we had to learn the hard way. We there. Listen, nobody's smoking no weed no more. We're gonna legalize that next year, so you won't even have to worry about it. And listen, we're gonna try to stay healthy, and we're gonna do what we do. We're gonna hold do on, what Rick. we do. Rick, Rick, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta slow you down for a second. Did you just say? That nobody on the Dallas Cowboys gonna be smoking weed this year. Is that what you just said? Is that what you just said? Is that what you just said? Rick, 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 Rick. We all know. We all know they gonna do it now. Come on now. We all know they gonna do that. Listen. Ain't nobody going to detect this shit. That's what we're going to do. Everything's going to go under the radar. <laughs> yes, Take it sir. easy, Rick. Take it easy, man. Rick is hilarious. Y'all heard what he said, y'all? The American, did you hear what he said? He said first he said, we ain't going to be smoking no weed this year. I said, are you sure? He said, well, they, they ain't going to catch us. <laughs> They're not going to detect it. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, try, trust me. I'm trying to tell y'all just wait. I promise you the Dallas Cowboys gonna do something. Don't, don't even worry about it. Take your time. Just sit back, chill out, recline, be patient. What can go wrong will go wrong. Trust me on that. Believe me. More of your calls in a minute. This is Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Catch the Stephen A. Smith Show live on 98.7 ESPN New York, ESPN LA 710, and Sirius XM Channel 80. You just can't make this stuff up. Weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Ha-ha! My favorite song. Kick it, Nuno! Kick it, cat! <laughs> this is for you, Rick. <laughs> My favorite song in the world. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I love this song. This should win a Grammy. This right here. <laughs> Click, kick that music. I need to hear it louder. I want the Cowboy fans to hear this. Black cat running around that franchise. This is such a beautiful song. It should win a Grammy. I'm trying to tell y'all. <laughs> Oh, I love it. No, that's good. You cut the music. Cut the music. That did it. They only needed to hear it once. You understand? That pathetic franchise that they, I can't stand your fans, all your Cowboy fans, all of yous. All of yous. You all make me sick. I don't feel that way. In L.A., though, Lakers have a good fan base. I wish the Knicks did. Knicks do have a good fan base. Let me take that back. The Knicks are very, very loyal because they stink, and still we don't go anywhere. But I'm trying to tell y'all right now, I'm loving L.A. I've been out here for three days. I I, I got to confess to y'all, I, I don't want to leave. I ain't going to lie. I'm kind of loving this town. Sunshine, beautiful weather. And they're actually relevant. But I digress. Back to the phones we go at 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-729-3776. I'm telling y'all right now, you know one thing I wanted to throw out there? To all you basketball fans out there, who you betting your money on? Jerry West or Irvin Magic Johnson? I think that's a legitimate question. Because anybody that thinks that Jerry West is just some meaningless consultant who will whisper sweet nothings in the ear of, 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 you know, of Steve Ballmer, you're smoking something. Jerry West shows up 
in an executive capacity, having the ear of folks, things happen. They just do. And you better get used to that. Trust me on it. Who you rolling with? West or Irvin Magic Johnson? Just a question. Charles in Georgia, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, how you doing, Stephen? I'm good, man. Talk to me. Uh, in regards to Carmelo, I can't believe the ESPN put their name on that list without putting her name to that list. That's kind of crazy. And, and I'm sorry, and I didn't my, understand what you said. You can't believe what? I can't believe. Man, your phone's gone. Your phone died, bro. I'm sorry. Mustafa in Vancouver, you're live with Stephen A. What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, brother. Uh, but I'm putting my money on Jerry West over Magic. I like Magic Johnson a lot. Jerry West is, just has historical success when you look at it. I mean, getting Shaq from the Lakers was something that's going to be in the history books forever in basketball history. Okay. But uh, when it comes to this ESPN ranking, Carmelo Anthony, we all know, like when we look at pure scoring, and scoring is, it was a huge aspect in basketball. He's one of the best pure scorers of all time in his prime, just pure scoring only. I mean, we know he has other flaws, but to put Lonzo Ball, who never played a, a, a game in the league, is ridiculous. But what's even more alarming is Dwayne Wade is off the top 100 list and Dwight Howard's off the top 100 list. How insane is that, Stephen A.? Well, I don't have a problem with Dwight Howard not being on the list because Dwight Howard has been a shell of himself. I mean, he has not um, – I mean, he's just fading. He's just fading. It's almost like the game is passing him by. I'm happy that he's in Charlotte, but I think it's his last chance to be relevant. I really do. There are times where where Dwight Howard looks like Lee's literally disappeared. Just a complete non-factor. And that has to change, man. That just has to change. What about your thoughts on D. Wade not being in the top 100? I don't like that. He's a three-time champion. Not only that, he just finished averaging about 18 a game. Uh, He can still ball. Uh, I definitely think that – I don't believe that there's 100 players in the NBA that should be listed above D. Wade. I think that's sacrilegious too. Uh, it's just these analytical nerds, man. I don't know how they I, make I, the list. I, I don't know either. Maybe because they want us to be the suckers that talk about their ignorance. How about that? That might be motivation. That might be motivation because nothing else explains it. Mustafa, appreciate the call, bro. Thank you so much. Let's go to my brother Mike in Denver. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on, big time? What's good with you, man? I'm good. Go ahead, bro. I just wanted to, I just wanted to talk about that Carmelo, Carmelo thing. Hey, I'll never, I'll never look at it again. If you remember this time last year or the year before, I don't know which it is, we had another guy that's a first ballot Hall of Fame at the same spot in Kobe Bryant. It's ridiculous, man. Listen, ridiculous. And, and then they want to act like they were right because Kobe looked so bad at times. Kobe looked bad because Kobe was still a number one option at age 37 with no help whatsoever. So, of course, he was going to look bad. But the point is, if he didn't have that onus on his shoulders and he was allowed to be on a team and had some help, he wouldn't have looked that bad. And and I'm looking at Carmelo still averaging 22 a night despite the dysfunctionality of the New York Knicks. These people don't know what the hell they're talking about. They don't know. Is you serious, man? At 64, he is, man, the first ballot Hall of Fame, and the guys that got in front of him, not half of them even going to be considered for the Hall of Fame. It's terrible, man. I'll never look at that again. Another thing I want to get in real quick with you is, LeBall Ball, man, hey, stop getting them passes, man. I know you got to restrain yourself a little bit on first take. Get them on the show, man, so you can let them have it, man. No, no, LeVar was on LeVar was on this morning. LeVar Ball was on first take this morning. He was on first take this morning talking that nonsense. Lakers going to win 50 games. My son is going to do damage. I promise you, if he play Golden State four times, he going to beat them at least twice. All of this, the sacrilegious stuff coming out of his mouth. Even though I will say this, December 18th, when they retire both of Kobe's jerseys, 24 and 8, they're playing to go to State Warriors that night. I can see the Lakers winning that night. It's possible. It's possible. Now they're going to sweep them this year, Stephen. You know, go, the now, Lakers have caught them twice in the last two years to beat them oh, when yeah, they won. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. Gonna yeah, the Golden State's going to probably sweep them this year. You're right. That's a good point. This is a good point. And not only that, Kevin Durant and them will ruin that night for Kobe, you know, and, and because the Lakers just don't have enough help yet. They don't have the horses okay. to beat Golden State, man. They just Nice talking to you, you know, but I like listening to you more. Have a good day, man. All right, bro, you be doing the same, man. Send your brother my love. Marty in L.A., you're live with Stephen A. What's going on, Marty Mark? 
Hey, it's Stephen A. Welcome to Los Angeles. We love you, yes. man. Enjoy it's the city. It's good to be here. Thanks a lot. Go hey, ahead, I bro. Got com- I, I got a comment, and I've got a uh, prediction. Comment yes, sir. is that the, Viking- if the Vikings beat Pittsburgh next week in Pittsburgh. Would you consider the Vikings a contender to uh, win the division? And yes. over the Packers. Yes, I consider them a t- I consider I consider them a, a contender right now. In terms uh, of the division. Second, in terms of the division, second, yes, I do. Second, Raiders over the Pittsburgh Raiders should be over the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Raiders will be getting in the Super Bowl. They're a force to be reckoned with. Jack Del Real, go. Well, listen, I just think that you got to wait to see what their defense is going to do. Offensively, I have no problem with people believing in the Raiders. And Khalil Mack is the Mack daddy, no doubt. Bruce Irvin and the crew, they can play. But I'm just saying that right now, we got to see what the Raiders do. We got to see whether or not that road win against Tennessee, which was huge, was a fluke. We got to find that out. And based off of that, you know, in, in the weeks to come, let's see. Because you got to remember, this is where the whole collective bargaining agreement hurts things a bit. You know why? Because it's one of those situations where because you don't have two a days and you're not putting on pads and helmets and all of this other stuff, you don't get to practice the way that you once did. And as a result, you're not as ready and as sharp earlier in the season as you once were. And because of that, it's very difficult for us to tell what we're seeing. So only time will tell and time will let us know. But right now, it's just a very, very difficult thing to do. There's just no other way around it. What do you think about, about Marshall Lynch being there? Oh, I love Beast Mode. I love Beast Mode. And I think he's perfect for Oakland. And he was running. He was running like a youngster out there, man. And he was running over dudes, too. He was making them feel him when they tackled him, which is exactly what you needed, to be honest with you. And I got to tell you something right now. I felt bad for Latavius Murray, too. I mean, this is a dude that had it all, you know, last year in Oakland. He decides to leave. And, you know, what's he doing now? Riding the bench because Dalvin Cook doing his thing in Minnesota. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Y'all don't even know. I mean, this beat right here. Snoop Dogg. Lord have mercy. This was some special beats right here. Mm, I can't even I can't even spit these lyrics, you know. Can't even do that over the FCC airways. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Back to the phones we go at 866-729-ESPN. DeAnthony in Los Angeles, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Stephen A., I just wanted to give you props for keeping it real um, in the same manner of all the sports writers and rating Carmelo Anthony where he is. That's a bunch of garbage. I can't even half the stuff. I would like to know who these people are as well to just tell them they're frauds. These are the same people that T.O. can't be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. It's not the Hall of Fame for best teammate. It's about stats. Just like what Mello's put it's about love. It's about levels of production. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that Terrell Owens, when he stopped playing football, was top six in every statistical category for a wide receiver. And Correct. top three in most receptions, touchdowns, yards. It's, it's, just an, it's just a disgrace that this man is not in the Hall of Fame yet. It really is. But go ahead. You hear the dog whistles of what's being said. I really wonder what's being said of why some people aren't voted, disrespected at 64th or not in a first ballot Hall of Famer. It's because I think some writers, if you don't call Todd to them or give them what they want, then you don't get their vote. I think that's garbage. Well, no, no, I don't think that. I think that's a simplistic way of looking at it, and I don't think that's entirely accurate, bro. Here's why. You also have teammates and coaches and folks who talk to folks off the record and really stain folks' reputations as well. It's not about – people don't realize that in most instances, in more instances than not, it's not at all about um, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a reporter not having a good relationship with the athlete. It's the athlete, you know, uh, turning off, alienating teammates, coaches, and others. They talk about how cancerous the individual may have been in the locker room and all of this other stuff and uses that to demean what they've accomplished. That's one of the things you have to think about, too. Don't underestimate the power of that. Demean the person, but when you're voting for a Hall of Fame, you're not going to deny he's not 
shouldn't be. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to deny it, but I'm saying to you, don't blame the reporter because what the reporter's doing is he's taking all things into account, not just your stats, but your presence and how how formidable you were in the eyes of the people who played with you. Like you do have some people who believe that T.O. was so cancerous that he shouldn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Who played in the NFL? Their their teammates, their coaches, and all that. Now it's bogus. It's nonsense. But you do have those who played the game who actually feel that way. But who are these voters? I'd like to know who they are. Just like who's the person that ranked Carmelo well, you got, 64? Well, you got, some of them, some of them are, 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 are former players and coaches and things of that nature. In terms of this ESPN poll, I don't know who the hell it is. I have no clue. But I assure you they never asked me. And I have nothing to do with this list because it's nonsense. I got to go, DeAnthony. Thanks a lot for the call. Dre in Georgia, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Stephen A., man, I hate to beat a dead horse, but, man, this this Carmelo thing is really bothering me, man. Number one, it's coming from ESPN, so that bothers me. Number two, how do they have Robert Covington before Carmelo Anthony? Hold on, let's stop right there. Robert Covington, Danny Green for the Spurs, Harrison Barnes for the Mavericks, Danilo Gallinari, Drew Holiday, and Lonzo Ball, who hasn't played an NBA game yet. It's ridiculous. I mean, if you put Carmelo Anthony, I know a lot of these writers, they're, they're doing it because they're, it's like they're punishing Carmelo because it's like he's, he's, he has his team underachieving or something like that. But if you put Carmelo Anthony on the Golden State Warriors, take Kevin Durant off, what do you think? You, do you think uh, uh, Carmelo would still be ranked uh, 64? <laughs> I don't know. No, I doubt it. No. I mean, it, and, it, it uh, doesn't thing, make any sense. Go ahead. Robert, and they also have Robert Covington uh, before Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. Look, man, don't I, get me started. Don't I, get me I don't started. get it, Stephen. I don't, okay. I don't you know I don't. You know I don't. I mean, what you want me to say? I don't get it either. I really, really don't. Kurt Lowe in Houston. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on, my brother? I hope everything is good for you out there. Absolutely, man. Anything with you, man, you, you, you're a respectable person, man. We love everything about you, man. You keep up the good work over there at Thank ESPN. You, man. Go ahead, brother. But I, I disagree with you 100% on this. How okay. dare you put Carmelo Anthony in the top 20? How dare you? That guy was one of the worst players in the league last year. You didn't watch him all year in New York? Well, you he know, was, I got hold, 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 stop right there. You're absolutely right. I couldn't take it, bro. I, w- I lived right down the block from the garden and it wouldn't go. I couldn't take it. I, I just I could I couldn't take it. Phil Jackson and the New York Knicks and what had happened to the New York Knicks, Kurt Lowe, I gotta tell you, man, I didn't go watch him. I gotta tell you, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. It was I was just miserable. I was miserable. I was absolutely miserable. I couldn't take it. So you're right. Stephen A. Carmelo Anthony is one of the worst efficient scores in the NBA. No, no, no. I wouldn't say that. Okay. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. No, no. He's a damn good scorer. He's a damn good passer. Don't play no damn defense, and you could you can indict him for holding on to the ball. I could respond by telling you who the hell is there to pass it to. Look at it. It doesn't matter how many shots you put up. I mean, it doesn't matter how many points you put up. It matters how many shots you put up to get those. Wait, 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 points, wait, okay? wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, no, wait a minute. If he shot, he didn't shoot the. He didn't shoot thirty five percent from the field. He shot 45% for the field. He shot 45% for the field. That's the field goal percentage is the new field goal percentage in the NBA because of all the three points they take, three pointers they take. So you look at the effect of field goal percentage, he had the same, he had the same effect of field goal percentage as Corey Brewer or around that area. You know what I'm saying? That's horrible. Out of, out of all the 18 man rock you're, 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 you're being too, you're being too, you're being, you're being too damn emotional the fact of the matter is is that you can't sit up there and say it was horrible you can't do that you can't do that and by the way i was i was mistaken he shot 43 percent from the field 43 percent not 45 he didn't even give a damn phil jackson everybody's trying to get this man to do something that he doesn't want to do and no you're wrong you're in for enough 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 enough's enough goodbye enough's enough kurt Lowe. goodbye you're wrong there. You ain't going to call up on this show and give Phil Jackson a pass. Hell no. What he did to that franchise last year was criminal. Criminal. And it was hard for anybody to perform under those circumstances. Absolutely hard. No way around it. But I hear you with your point about Carmelo Anthony. It's just that on the defensive side of the ball, you have a point. Offensively, you don't have any points. Sorry. Absolutely not.
Your calls to close out the show in a minute. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. You must be going blind. Ow! It's the best fight in boxing, y'all. The showdown that the fans demanded this Saturday night, September 16th, live from T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G Gennady Golovkin. They'll collide for the middleweight championship of the world. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on pay-per-view. Two of the most explosive heavy-handed fighters in the sport. Alvarez and Triple G square for the battle for middleweight and pound-for-pound supremacy. Lineal middleweight world champion Alvarez, 49-1-1 with 34 KOs. His only loss coming to Money Mayweather has stated that he fears no man and plans to prove this is indeed the Canelo era. Unified middleweight world champion Golovkin, 37-0, and 33 KOs. His dream of this type of fight in the knockout king is promising a big drama show. This will be a can't-miss event for sports fans everywhere. The biggest star in the sport taking on the widely recognized baddest man on the planet. Don't miss it. Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. Golovkin. This Saturday night, September 16th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, live on pay-per-view. Back to the phones we go. CB, Pasadena, talk to me. You're live. What's up? All right, Hollis Queen. As usual, it's been enthralling, captivating, and very perceptive. What a weekend in college and the NFL. My goodness, I thoroughly enjoyed those games. But you know, to your point that you made earlier, Stephen A., is that New York, you know, they're a mess basketball. You know, because I can remember my favorite player, Dr. J, in the Rutgers Park. And I saw some documentary on him. He was a living legend out there. And I didn't know Dr. J averaged like 40 points in the ABA. So, I mean, they have a rich heritage. And every player in the NBA loves to go to Madison Square Garden for some reason. They just have a feeling. They have an aura about it. I hope New York. I know you were talking about L.A. and our teams. We're doing well. But the doggone Dodgers, doggone it, uh, Stephen A., if the Dodgers wet the bed like they've been doing later, uh, our fans are going to be all over them now. Hey, you know, we're getting close. You're right. I got you. We got to, you know, the Dodgers, the Dodgers got to step up. Let me tell you something. The Cleveland Indians handling their business. They've won 20 straight. Terry Francona's doing a fabulous job. You know, the Angels still in the thick of it. The Dodgers are the nosedive. The Cubs, the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Washington Nationals all look like they could they could take the Dodgers. Hopefully it's just fatigue. They'll be rested enough come playoff time to be ready to handle their business. They ended their losing streak, but the bottom line is they look horrible. And they better get it together. It's really, really that simple. Appreciate the call. John in Manhattan, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Good morning, Stephen. How are you feeling? I'm good. Talk to me. Listen, Carmelo Anthony's top 30, bottom line. And also the Knicks and the Nets will, will get better once they get responsible and common sense management. Okay. That's good. I mean, Appreciate that's it. plain and simple. I mean, you ain't got to say nothing else. Can't say it no better than that, bro. Thank you for the call. Manuel in Cali, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Welcome to Cali, Stephen A. Thank you, bro. Go ahead. Hey, brother. I just want to say that just like that song you put on, some people who say Carmelo is 64 must be going blind. That's right. Brother, What's wrong with the same question I got. My son, Manny, I want to send a shout out to him and Jesus. He had a question for you. He's a CP3 fan, and he wants to know how his Clippers are going to do this year. I think they're going to be okay. They're going to be decent. They're just not going to be as good as they would have been with CP3. That's a devastating loss. I like Patrick Beverly a lot, but he ain't CP3. Sam Decker's all right, but, you know, I mean, listen, Blake Griffin's got to step up and be a superstar. He's got the requisite talent. You got him with DeAndre Jordan, okay? They should be able to win 45 games, all right? But they ain't going anywhere. They're not going to be – first of all, the Clippers are not better than Golden State. They're not better than San Antonio. They're not better than Oklahoma City. Those three teams right there, they are not better than. And you're going to see other teams going to come up like Memphis and others, and, and that's going to get in Houston. That's going to give them a run for their money. It's going to give them a run for their money. So I'm not sold on the Clippers at all. I see the Clippers as a sixth or seventh seed in the Western Conference, going home in the first round. That's my prediction. Appreciate the call. Gary in San Antonio, talk to me. You're live with Stephen A. 
Hey, Stephen A., what's going on? First and foremost, is I heard you got to hear your favorite song, The Accident Waiting to Happen. Well, as a <laughs> Dallas Cowboy fan, I appreciate that picture you took with me last week after you did your radio show. <laughs> no you problem. Yeah. So I just want the Cowboy fans to know Stephen A. got love for the Cowboy fans because I had my dad's Brian on it. He took the picture. But anyway, I'm going to make my point real quick. I just wanted to ask, do you think Carmelo's going to get moved? I mean, do you think he's going to be willing to go somewhere Well, listen, else? listen, listen. He if, he, if he's smart, he will. If he's smart, he doesn't put all his eggs in the basket of the Houston Rockets. Right now, that's what he's doing because he's trying to go with his brother, CP3. They're very, very tight, and he's trying to go and play with CP3. But all Houston has to offer is Ryan Anderson, and the Knicks are not accepting that. They're not taking that. I'm telling you that right now. So as a result, he's going to have to open up, be a bit more open-minded about potential options since he has that no-trade clause in his contract that he'd have to waive in order for a deal to get made you know he's got to find himself in a situation he's got to find a more comfortable situation for him that's going to also work for the Knicks because the Knicks don't have to trade him to anybody so either he's going to end up capitulating to some degree or he's going to end up stuck with the Knicks I hear you real quick my last question I know we're not going to win 50 games the Lakers LeVar he's kind of delusional I got it we're not going to win 50 how many games do we have to win to really entice LeBron to even think about coming our way? I don't know about LeBron. I don't think it's about the games that you win. I think it's about whether or not you get Paul George. Let's say, for example, if Lonzo Ball shows promise and you only win 29 to 30 games. But Lonzo Ball shows a lot of promise as a young stud point guard. And, and, and you know, Larry Nance continues to develop and either Julius Randle or Brandon Ingram do their thing. And then Paul George says, I'm definitely going there. And I think that improves your chances exponentially, but we'll see. I got to run. Easy in Houston. You're live with Stephen A. Real quick, Easy, go ahead. Hey, hey, Stephen A., first-time caller. I have a Thank question. Uh, do you think by Carmelo being too mellow is the reason why he's ranked number 64? Well, you could say that. Um, that's a legitimate argument that some have made. What I would respond in con is that I just think he's prioritized his money. I don't think he's lazy. I don't think it's that he doesn't care. I think that he has been scared to miss out on the potential dollars that, that, that were there for him. So as a result, he would take contracts and saddle and strap himself into a situation as opposed to leaving his options open so he would be able to position himself for a championship. He put himself in positions where he had to make a choice between the money and pursuit of titles, and he chose the money, and that's why he's in the position he's in. All right, Stephen A., thank you for taking taking my call, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Let's go to Tim in L.A. You're live with Stephen A. Real quick, Tim, go ahead. Hey, what's going Tim? on, Stephen A.? I'm good. Go ahead, man. You're live on the air. You only got a minute. Go ahead. I want to ask you a quick question, man. With the Giants and Seahawks off at the line struggle, which team is in more trouble due to that? They're built exactly the same. Good defense is terrible on line. Which team is in more trouble due to their more, the, the Giants are in more trouble because the Giants without Odell Beckham Jr. on the field looked completely and utterly lost and rudderless. That cannot fly. Seattle, even though they looked awful themselves, you got to believe that Russell Wilson will figure out how to make things happen because he's not a stationary quarterback. He's mobile. He moves around. He extends plays. He makes things happen. So as a result of that, I think that puts Seattle in a better position. And as good as the Giants' defense is, I don't think their defense is better than Seattle's. So the combination of all of that makes me say that the Giants would be in far more trouble than Seattle is right now with the two poorest offensive lines that both are saddled with. That's just my opinion about it. Got to get on out of here for the day. Looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. I'm going to be coming at you live from Vegas. Coverage, coverage for the Canelo Alvarez Triple G fight. First take will be in the house live from Vegas, and so will I for the radio show as well. 22 hours from now, I'll be back on the air. Make sure you tune in. It's Stephen A. signing off. Peace and love. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.